and now let's uh, proceed to the lesson proper so this is one of our guide questions that we are about to answer this afternoon what is objectivity so join me as we discover together what is the real meaning and definition of the word objectivity as one of the scientific attitudes that we must have as researchers. When we say objectivity, it is a central philosophical concept related to reality and truth which has been variously defined by sources. Generally, objectivity means the state or quality of being true, even outside of a subject's individual biases, interpretations, feelings, and imaginings. A proposition is generally considered objectively true to have objective truth when its truth conditions are met without biases caused by feelings, ideas, opinions, etc. of a sentient subject. So this answers your question number one in your pretest. Therefore, the correct answer there is true. So the statement is true. A second broader meaning of the term refers to the ability in any context to judge fairly without partiality or external influence. This second meaning of objectivity is sometimes used synonymously with neutrality. So this, the question number two in your pretest is also true because the statement can be found in the definition of objectivity. So again, when we talk about objectivity class, the uh, philosophical concept of this is about reality and truth. Okay, that's why uh, objectivity is very important as researchers, as professionals like me, as your teacher, that I must uphold the truth. Okay, I will base giving you grades based on the real score. Okay. So, we're talking here about the reality. So, if I want to become objective person or objective type of teacher, then I must give you your grades based on your real score. That's why it is in your hands on how to make your grades high. Okay? Since you have with you your target for the first grading, up to fourth grading and so each one of us not just me as your teachers will practice objectivity but you at the same time you have to have this within you you have to always be objective when you are asked by your teacher do it correctly based on the truth okay Another definition of objectivity in science is a value that informs how science is practiced and how scientific truths are discovered. So this again answer the question number three in your pretest, and the statement is still true. It is also the idea that scientists, in attempting to uncover truths about the natural world, must aspire to eliminate personal biases, a priori or priority of commitments, emotional involvement, etc. So objectivity is often attributed to the property of scientific measurements since this, this talks about accuracy of measurement. No? When we are testing and we are measuring something, we need to be accurate in giving the exact numerical value because if we want to become objective, no, we have to tell the truth. We have to measure the exact measurement of a certain object that we are trying to measure. So it does intimately related to the aim of testability and 
reproduct reproducibility to be properly considered objective. The results of measurements must be communicated from person to person and then demonstrated for third parties as an advance in understanding of the objective world. Such demonstrable knowledge would ordinarily confer demonstrable powers of predictions or technological constructions. Because when we are telling the truth, we need to relay it. We need to share it. We need to demonstrate it. We don't want to keep the idea within us. We are sharing it. It's why some of the the videos found in YouTube are uh, educational because the author, the blogger, or whatsoever we call them, they are trying to share their knowledge to other people. So this is an example of being objective type of person because we want to, to, to teach. We want to educate other people. Okay, so that is the world of objectivity. So problem arises from not understanding the limits of objectivity in scientific research. Actually, there are so many problems we encounter and that's normal, natural. Because if there's no problem, it's also abnormal. So it's, it's just normal when we encounter problems, especially in science, when we're conducting experiments or scientific researches. Now, given that the object or the object selection and measurement process are typically subjective, when results of that subjective process are generalized to the larger system from which the object was selected, the stated conclusions are necessarily biased. Kasi nga po, nagiging bias lang po siya because there is that subjective, no? subjective type of selections or giving uh, measurements. So, we need to clarify. We need to uh, distinguish the difference between objectivity and subjectivity. Because being subjective sometimes also happens inside the classroom your teacher can be subjective so either of the two no, objectivity and subjectivity if the teacher is subjective meaning to say he or she has this what she called favoritism because if she wants to give you a higher grade because you're close to him or her he can do that or she can do that that is one of the example of subjectivity so in our life, no, there are just two words that we are doing or we are exercising, objectivity and subjectivity. And it's up to us what type of attitude are we going to practice? What are we going to show to other people? My question is, are you objective or you are subjective? You are the only one who can answer that question. Objectivity should not be confused with scientific consensus. Scientists may agree at one point in time, but later discover that this consensus represented a subjective point of view. The terms objectivity and subjectivity in their modern usage generally relate to a perceiving subject normally a person and a perceived or unperceived object and this answer are question number five in your pretest and the answer there is still true okay so from one to five the correct answer is true okay for those who got the correct answers congratulations for those who did not it's okay at least we learned from this moment that the answers are all correct so the object is something that presumably exists independent of the subject's perception of it and th the other words the object would be there as it is 
even if no subject perceived it. Hence, objectivity is typically associated with ideas such as reality, truth, and reliability. Okay? So, it's very understandable that when we are objective, we are telling the truth, no? And we base it in reality, and we can be a reliable source of information. So, when we will be posting our blogs in uh, YouTube, once the viewers found out that our blog or the content of our blog are, are based on reality and it upholds the truth, then you are a reliable source of information and more, more or less uh, you will gain um, many or thousands or millions of subscribers, likes, comments, and reactions. It is both a metaphysical and an epistemological concept. It pertains to the relationship of consciousness to existence. Metaphysically, it is the recognition of the fact that reality exists independent on any perceiver's consci consciousness. Epistemologically, it is the recognition of the fact that a perceiver's man's consciousness must acquire knowledge of reality by certain means reasons in accordance with certain rules or logic. Kaya hindi nawawala si logic no, in our real life. So we have to always solve the puzzle logically. So when we are doing that, we are also using objectivity. No, It can be again metaphysical or epistemological. This means that although reality is immutable and in any given context, only one answer is true. The truth is not automatically available to a human consciousness and can be obtained only by a certain mental process which is required of every man who seeks knowledge. Like us researchers, when we are trying to solve a problem, when we are trying to find solutions out of the problem, we are trying to 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 process mentally no the the data that we have gathered we are analyzing it understanding it in order for us to find out or to have a good conclusion and recommendation at the end of the experiment so that there is no substitute for this process no escape from the responsibility for it no shortcuts, no special revelations to privileged observers, and that there can be no such thing as a final authority in matters pertaining to human knowledge. Example, when you are not uh, viewing the lesson, you are not answering the, the pretest, you jump into the, the, the answer key so that you will not be... Uh, finding or giving efforts and answering the questions because you want all things uh, comfortable and easy. So this will just show that you are not a type of person which is objective because you used to be uh, uh, not responsible and you used to do the shortcuts. Okay? So life must go on. We should not jump from one no one place to another, one situation to another. No? You have to hate shortcuts. You have to experience all the things, whether it is hard or not. Okay? Life is like a wheel. We sometimes at the top, we sometimes at down. Okay? So, no need for shortcuts. The most important thing is we learn from day to day experience. And with that, you can be an objective person if you will be doing it correctly. Metaphysically, the only authority is reality. Epistemologically, one's own mind. So these two are very important. If you used to become metaphysically, it's okay. If you want to be epistemological, it's okay. But if you have both, then better. The first is the ultimate arbiter of the second. 
Okay? The concept of objectivity contains the reason why the question, who decides what is wrong or what is right? Nobody decides, right? Nature does not decide. It merely is. Man does not decide. In issues of knowledge, he merely observes that which is. So our only role is to observe. We should not decide. Because it's also uh, natural or normal. Kumbaga, uh, it's our destiny. It will happen and it will happen. We cannot stop it. Okay? When it comes to applying his knowledge, man decides what he chooses to do according to what he has learned. Remembering that the basic principle of rational action in all aspect of human existence is nature to be commanded must be obeyed. This means that man does not create reality and can achieve his values only by making his decisions consonant with the facts of reality. I hope you guys understand the importance and the meaning of objectivity. With this, I think all of you can be objective already. You know, with all your tasks, with all the given uh, uh, activities by your teachers, not just in my subject, but in all subject area. Okay? And I hope not just being objective, but of course, all the scientific attitudes that we've discussed to become curious, to become intellectual honest, uh, to become critical minded, and of course, to become a skeptical type of person. And again, the last that we've discussed right now is to become objective scientists in the future or researchers.